Welcome back, everybody. My name's Dr. Dev, and this is my sleep assistant, Barney. Hey, Barney, how's it going, buddy? All good, Dr. Dev. Now, this episode is one of a few that we concentrate on mental health and sleep. Well, mental health and sleep just goes together importantly because mental health doesn't go away when the sun goes down. It's still there at night time, and it impacts hugely on sleep quality and quantity. And today we're going to talk about anxiety in sleep. It's a huge problem. Almost one in four Australians suffer from anxiety and it has a massive impact on sleep. And if you're not sleeping at night, it'll certainly affect on how you feel in the day. So what do I mean by anxiety? It's that feeling of being nervous and anxious and edgy and just worrying and just not being able to relax. You begin to feel restless and you can't keep still and easily annoyed and agitated. And there's a lot of physical symptoms as well with anxiety. That feeling of insomnia where you can't get to sleep and the busy brain and can't stay asleep and the fatigue and the headaches and teeth clenching is very common as well. But other symptoms, particularly worrying some, can be the chest tightness and the palpitation and let's not forget irritable bowel. There's obviously a lot of psychological aspects of anxiety, such as the fear and the worry, but also the obsessive thinking, sometimes associated with a bit of obsessive compulsive disorder. But catastrophization is very common. And I'll give you an example. A patient of mine last week was just thinking irrationally about everything, including going shopping. And she told me about how she had all her bags. She came out to the car park and found that her car wasn't there. So someone who thinks rationally and is not anxious will say, oh, maybe I uh, parked on the wrong floor, maybe I should be upstairs. Now this particular patient of mine, impending doom, catastrophization, she was going to call the police because she thought someone had stolen her car. So that's a beautiful example of this irrational behaviour driven by anxiety. But there's a lot of other aspects of anxiety, let's not forget about such as social anxiety, the inability to feel relaxed if you're with people or in a crowd or you go shopping. And particularly we've seen this in COVID with lockdown and wearing masks and feeling that everybody around you may have COVID. Let's not forget the phobias. And phobias is a very common aspect of anxiety. Phobias about insects, phobias about flying, phobias about anything almost. And then there's the OCD as well, that feeling of obsessive thoughts, having to repetitively check things or wash your hands and hygiene, and particularly in COVID times, this has been a huge problem. And let's not forget panic disorders, where that overwhelming fear and stress and impending doom and just hyperventilation and just feel the world is going to collapse around you. These are very, very common symptoms of anxiety that's hugely debilitating for many people. But with regard to sleep, that initiation and that difficulty maintaining is all driven by that hyper-arousal state, that feeling of just busy brain. And that's where a lot of the headaches and the teeth clenching comes from. Now, many of those who have anxiety and can't sleep, they unfortunately resort to alcohol. And we all know that the odd glass of wine might be fine or a beer if you're around people you're enjoying and the ambience and so on. But unfortunately, it can be two wines, three wines, four wines, three beers, four beers. And then, as a result, the sleep becomes even more fragmented. And caffeine as well. Caffeine is a huge problem in those with anxiety. Because you feel so tired and brain fog that you need in caffeine to keep awake. But the more caffeine you have, the more hyper alert you become and the more stimulus there is in the sleep. And therefore, more issues with insomnia. Phew, that was a lot about anxiety, but how do we treat anxiety? Well, the first mainstay aspect of treatment is psychology or clinical psychological techniques. Cognitive behavioural therapy is a well-established form of therapy for anxiety. And CBTI, the eye being insomnia, is what many clinical psychologists will help you with to treat your anxiety. They try and counter or control the negative thoughts that you may have about your sleep. Many people become anxious about the sleep and also they may try too hard to get to sleep and guess what happens? The opposite happens. They stay wide awake and ping, that's it. 
And the behavioral part of CBTI will help you develop good habits and avoid those behaviors. One aspect is called stimulus control therapy, whereby if you're in your bedroom and you still can't feel you can fall asleep and you're agitated, well, remove yourself away from that area, i.e. take yourself out of the bedroom, go to another room, or something exceptionally boring on TV, read a magazine, you're controlling that stimulus to stay awake. Hence it's called control stimulus therapy. Also sleep restriction is another form of behavioral therapy. Well, what you're doing is trying to condense your sleep. So rather than having your sleep chopped up into little pieces, sleep, wake, sleep, wake, sleep, wake, you restrict your sleep. So you try and go to sleep a little bit later I wake up a little bit earlier. So you try and condense that time in bed and improve something called the sleep efficiency. Then the sleep hygiene. Little tips on how to control your sleep patterns, how to be consistent with your sleep, how to go to bed at the right time, wake up at the right time. We call this sleep hygiene, probably more related to sleep routine. Relaxation training is extremely important for those who are busy and tense and this method will help you relax your mind and your body and muscle relaxation is a, another form of relaxation therapy. You might listen to podcasts, I call it distractional therapy, just distract you from all those worries that you might have. And there's a more relatively recent technique called biofeedback and neurofeedback that basically allows you to assess your bodily biological signs like fast heart rate and muscle tension and just try and train that brain just to calm down. And certainly your psychologist might be able to help you with this biofeedback and those who feel locked down and feel isolated, you can even do that remotely and have equipment sent to you at home. Now traditionally you might go and see your doctor about your insomnia and anxiety and medications were very commonly prescribed. These might include melatonin or antihistamines and even benzodiazepines. We're moving away from benzodiazepines because of their addictive nature. And in fact, drugs like diazepam or temazepam or nitrazepam, these benzodiazepines, might sedate you and promote hypnosis, but doesn't actually treat the primary driver of your insomnia and your agitation and anxiety. And this is this hyperarousal state, this flight, fright and flight, this cortisol. So as we move away from those medications, certainly focusing on behavioral techniques, there's one therapy that I have had immense success with in my patients, and that's cannabidiol oil or CBD oil. CBD oil recently has been an absolute revelation in my practice, helping with that busy brain, that hyperarousal, promoting that better sleep. Remember that insomnia and sleep disturbance is a secondary phenomenon to the primary problem, which is the hyperarousal driven by that anxiety state. So what's the point of giving hypnotics? So if you treat the hyperarousal state with something like CBD oil, and there's growing research that shows this, then you're more likely to treat the secondary symptoms, particularly the sleep disturbance, those palpitations, that feeling of fright, fright and flight, that chest tightness, the headaches and the clenching. So for me, CBD oil should be something worth considering for those who still struggle with anxiety, despite all the other good things you're doing, such as the CBTI. So there you go. That's anxiety in a nutshell. And it's important that if you are still struggling, you're not alone. Go and seek help with a doctor. Consider help from a psychologist or a sleep doctor as well to help you get your sleep better. I will see you next time.